Here with Jordan Vichenik, former Cage Wars featherweight world champion. Another win, another quick finish against a veteran. I mean, what can we say? You're just levels above, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't put it that far, but yeah, I feel good at the minute. Yeah, and the move to lightweight, I mean, was it always in the back of your mind or what was the, the, the thinking behind it? I just thought, you know, I'm, I'm not, I've not got that call up from the UFC at the minute, so I just thought, look, let me test the weight out. Eventually, I always knew I was going to be a 155 eventually, but I thought, let me test it out, let me see how I feel on, on the Cage Wars roster, and then we'll go from there. Well, is it thinking also maybe that, you know, if there's a last minute call out, maybe it would be a little bit easier to make the weight to lightweight rather than featherweight? Yeah, 100%. I mean, the cut to 145, you see me walking around compared to all the other 145 guys, I'm nearly twice the size of them. So that would have always been, I could never have done a 145 um, last minute, but a 155 last minute, as long as I'm, oh yeah, yeah, I'm there. Yeah. And in the lightweight division, you know, we've got like now a new lineup of guys to look at. Is there anyone that interests you in the cage wires? Um, I haven't I haven't looked into it that far as of yet because again we started off trying to get a 145 fight it was getting a little bit closer I said let's just do 155 so I haven't looked into it I mean I always keep my eye on sort of all divisions but I'll definitely have a closer look now and um, but I'm happy to fight anybody. Mm -hmm. And Brad Wharton said it so well that you have organically you know became basically a cage warriors legend here at the Indigo. What does it feel like to have like such a strong fan base who really like truly wants the best for you? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, my only problem now is, is um, the ticket sales because everybody knows I'm going to be on the Indigo cards. They don't wait for my link. They use the early bird. So that's the only thing that affects me. But it's amazing because I always know when I come out, it's going to be a big crowd. And, and I, you can genuinely see like people are happy for you to win. And I like that. You know, I like when you can see people's like, genuine emotion for you in a good way. You don't even seem to have any haters, which is very rare nowadays. Do you get any hateful messages sometimes? Uh, sometimes. It's just normally about how bad my tattoos are, but I'll take it. I know that. I know that. <laughs> so I just take it. Okay, well, speaking of tattoo, you said you're going to wait until you get to the UFC. Do you have something in mind that you would get tattooed? Uh, I didn't have anything in mind, but now I do think I've got a gap on my knee, and I think when I get into the UFC, I'm going to get the UFC logo yeah. uh, printed on me because, you know, um, I don't really have that many MMA tattoos, so that'd be nice to be like the cherry, the cherry on the cake. And let's talk about a new attire. You're not wearing it right now, but you got the lumberjack style attire. And what's the motto again? It's let's keep chopping at the tree until it falls down. Yeah, that was it. You know, someone just said to me, you know, you just got to keep chopping at the tree. Eventually it will fall. And all I got to do is got to keep chopping yeah. the tree. I keep winning these fights. Eventually the tree will fall and I'll be in the UFC. I mean, you could have picked maybe a smaller tree, no? <laughs> nah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> that go was big a big effing home. tree you picked. Yeah, go big or go home. That's how it's got to be. Thank you so much for your time. Congrats again. Thank you very much.